Hello all. In this tutorial, I will show you how to verify the performance of any oscillator in Cadence ADE Explorer under Maestro environment. And if you are still using uh, ADL from the old Cadence releases, you can follow the same setup steps. There are some minor GUI differences which uh, shouldn't be an issue, I assume. So here I'm using a current stalled voltage control oscillator to demonstrate all the verifications. But you can use the same uh, steps for any other oscillator or even uh, for the VCO which is implemented in PLL. Just remember there is a slight difference between uh, in, between the verifying analysis if you are using an LC based oscillator which I would also discuss later. Now coming to the design here I am using here a uh, 5 stage current start voltage control oscillator and a buffer stage at the end. So the buffer here I am using just to make sure that I am getting a rail to rail swing and also to make sure that it, uh, when I connect this ring oscillator to the next stage here, to some other uh, sub block here, the capacitor loading which is going to happen here, this buffer will take care of that. So uh, let me go briefly inside this one cell to show you uh, what I'm using here. So it's a typical inverter cell here to uh, generate the delay. And uh, I'm using this PM3 as a uh, current star transistor. Uh, to control the current which is going to flow through the inverter which eventually affects the delay of my inverter therefore the frequency of the ring oscillator and this current is controlled by this VBP which is also called as uh, control voltage so this control voltage basically when I change this it will change the current which is going to flow through this inverter hence also changes the delay or the oscillation of the uh, uh, oscillator and this NMOS here I am just using it for the sake of symmetry Okay, now uh, if I go back to my design here top level, so I, I define this VBP uh, as a variable here as V control. You can see here just to show you the impact of this control voltage uh, on, on the oscillation frequency and I also define the VDD as a variable here to also show its impact on my uh, frequency. Okay, now the first simulation which I'm going to do is uh, the basic simulation which is a transient simulation here to see the oscillator behavior. So I'm going to go here launch and uh, AD Explorer and you can use the ADL if you if you are not familiar with the AD Explorer but I will use here AD Explorer. So create new here okay mm, make sure that view here is maestro and uh, okay then now I have it here so the first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the analysis which I'm going to do. So for that, I will just click on here and under this, click to add analysis and the transient and I will define 100 nanoseconds as a time accuracy conservative, the rest as it is and I press OK. The next, I will copy the variables if I have in my schematic design. So I just go here, click to add variables and then copy from. So I have two variables, V control, uh, let me keep it for now 0.8 and VDD, it's 1.8. Uh, okay. And then the next would be uh, to define the output signal which I want to plot. So I will go here outputs. You can go here add and signal or what you can do is you can go here to be plotted. Select on design. So basically I select this output signal here. Okay. And uh, that's it. I have it here and I will give is a name V out. And now uh, also instead of plotting this as a wave, I would also like to get the number, you know, just as a frequency number, what is my frequency to be, you know, it, it will be displayed here. So for that, I go to the calculator. Uh, again, uh, you can go here, add the expression here, but if you are new to the explorer, I would recommend you to go to tools and then go to the calculator here and then uh, select the net for which you want to measure the frequency. So I go here at the output. And then uh, I go here functions frequency. Okay, so I will send it to the KD Explorer environment. Okay, so it's here now. Let me define it as frequency. And also, if I want to plot, let's say the power consumption, or want to display the power consumption here, I will go here uh, in outputs, save all, and then just uh, enable this all here. Okay, so this is another thing. and. Uh, now very important uh, when you have a ring oscillator the normal method to start up the oscillation is to set the initial conditions either high which is VDD or low which is ground on uh, one of the signals here uh, or here 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 or in the feedback loop. So 
we define uh, this by using this option here under simulation uh, convenience aids initial condition so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select this feedback network here this one and i will define it as uh, 1.8 okay now if you have a differential ring oscillator if you have a differential ring oscillator uh, you have two nets there so one you will define as 1.8 the other one which will be for example like coming like this it will be uh, zero which is ground okay so i press okay here i think now i define the uh, the analysis the design variable and the output signals also and uh, one more thing i'm going to do here is it's just for me but i think for not for you so i'm going to define here the simulator performance mode as spectre because uh, due to some license issue i don't want to use the eps of spectre x uh, okay so it's done now let me start a simulation here now So the simulation has started it is showing here the pending values so okay it's, it's almost done and i got the results here so you can see here it also uh, this is the output signal the frequency you can see rail to rail uh, because of the buffer i'm using and uh, this is the frequency value here now if i close this again so i will what i'm going to do is i don't want to plot this value here so you see here my oscillator frequency is 100.3, uh, 100, uh, 103.1 megahertz. Now the reason I consider is 100.103.1 uh, megahertz, even though I wanted 100 megahertz, is because when I go for the layouts and I do the RC extraction, even at the measure after the tape out, so because of the RCs which are going to be there, you know, generated because of the layout and also at the at the tape out. Uh, it's going to have some impact on my frequency, which is typically it's going to decrease the frequency. That means if I use if I use hundred megahertz exactly here, to, it's going to be lesser than that at the tape out level. So to make sure that we still have more than hundred megahertz, we have hundred megahertz. So I I kept it a bit buffer here. This is very important, especially when you are trying to generate a, a frequency of let's say tens of gigahertz. Uh, it's it's very important that you keep some buffer there. And now, let me go here tools. I will uh, go to result browser and uh, trans, and I want to send this to the calculator power. And I will take average of this, and I will send this to also to uh, here, and I will give it power. Okay. I don't want to plot it. So again, I'm going to go like this. So this is the frequency signal and you see here uh, okay i think i need to okay i need to plot them also here so you can see here the the power consumption is around let's say uh, 994 microwatts and the frequency is 103.1 now this is the basic simulation which you need to do to make sure that your oscillation uh, your oscillator is working properly and then Let's plot one more important curve, which uh, you might have seen on, on the papers and other things. So this is the called as frequency tuning uh, tuning curve. So basically, we try to uh, vary this V control here to see the impact on the frequency and to see if it's varying, let's say plus minus, we still have our uh, desired frequency at the output. So I just go here uh, uh, on his and I click on these three dots here. So I'm going to sweep it. As I mentioned, let's say I will sweep it from uh, 0 0.6 to 1.2 and steps you can define here it's very much similar to the parametric sweep what we are doing you can define it here but let me keep it as it is uh, or let me let's say take it 8 okay and uh, I will sweep it again okay so I'm going to start the simulation here it's it's going to run and uh, we are going to see the uh, frequency turn uh, tuning curve which is we control what is you can see you can also do the same thing for the vdd here uh, simply you you sweep the vdd let's say plus minus 20 percent something like this to see the impact of uh, power supply on your uh, frequency you can also try to see uh, the impact of vdd on power consumption as well as we can plot all these curves to basically understand uh, your design uh, related constraints Okay, so let's wait for a moment. I think it's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, now uh, 
this is something which is i don't think it's going to help us but this is important here so i'm going to just read this part here uh, just to see these things so you can see the frequency here the red one okay so you can see with the wind control when i let me do one thing i will send this to the uh, new window here no uh, wait go uh, to new window okay so here you see when i am sweeping the v control which is the control voltage uh, from 0.6 to 1.2 the frequency is slowly slowly decreasing okay so this is also it can help you to you know uh, to get your desired frequency by simply changing the v control here so this is referred as frequency tuning curve okay and uh, the other one was the power consumption so when i am changing the v control here you can see here uh, the power consumption is also decreasing okay so that means while increasing the v control the power consumption is decreasing as well as the frequency is decreasing okay that means low frequency means low current here low power consumption also here so this is how you do the basic simulation for a ring oscillator and in the coming tutorials uh, on this vco i'm going to show you the different analysis like p noise pss and and how to check the stability K kvco and and other parameters also thank you